The Gambia has a small, undiversified economy, heavily reliant on tourism, trade, remittance, and substance agriculture. Due to the coronavirus, there is literally a total shutdown in the tourism industry, which has significant negative socio-economic impact on all sectors in the industry. The COVID-19 has therefore for the combined dominance of unemployment, the Gambia has been grappling with, as the total shutdown of the industry means all stakeholders in the industry risk losing their jobs and income. Have a look. According to statistics, tourism supports about 42,000 different jobs. But we can see the closure of all hotels due to the COVID-19 in the Gambia. About 5,000 hotel workers lost their jobs. I roll the mango dig among our masses in the morning, dig the latium, dig the cassette, lamp in the morning, go in the door. Dig the cassette, No, if you assign a room to talk, it's new curry, but the time being. Il y a des routes, des cols, des arts et des crafts. Il y a des gens qui ont été en train de se faire. Ils 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 ont été en train de se faire. Les temps comme ça, especially when the tourist season is fast approaching. We can see how busy the riverside used to be. But looking at it today, it is empty due to the coronavirus pandemic. Well, the phones I had, I mean, the money has been sent for all hotel workers. I was very much happy because, I mean, what at the end when I came to realize that, I mean, we people of Sunday and Ozone, they are exempted. Is it? So it's frustrating because we are hoteliers. I think any benefit that comes, we should all share. We should have something from it. But, I mean, the purpose of uh, exempting us is what I can understand. I said it keeps everything. Now tourists are not coming. Uh, uh, where we are working, we are working at Ocean Beach. Ocean Beach, Ocean Beach is, you know, close. This year, uh, uh, tourists will not be coming because we were told that uh, the, the, the tour operators cancel their trip to Gambia. So because of the pandemic, uh, what I'm, you know, I, I, that's what I heard. Lately, hundred million dollars has been allocated for the COVID-19 support fund for resilience and recovery. Okay, I will go in for orange juice. Gambian orange juice. Okay. Sis. You are coming to have the best. There you go. Oh, What's wow. your name? I'm Amina. Amina? Yes. <laughs> yeah, this is what I do here mm -hmm. with my colleagues. But at this moment, you can see none of them are not around. So at this moment, my business, I just, you know, do from hand to mouth. You know, you don't have anything to keep for you know, like to say I'm saving now because what you work, you have to go and spend it again. Otherwise, it will be difficult more. You know, and the COVID-19 is like, you know, it's a it's a very bad, you know, company in the business side. So, and the business is not so good at this moment. They are not yet ready, maybe, to give it to people who are the, you know, the right guys. Okay, but what I heard is, is people that for who are going to benefit is if you pay the lynching for the, you know, like the past years, then you will be lucky to have the, you know, funding in this, in this, you know, funding that they are talking about. The government of the Gambia, through the Ministry of Tourism and Culture, 
on Wednesday, September 38, announced the distribution of $100 million COVID-19 support fund for tourism resilience and recovery. The $100 million package is meant to improve the resilience, effectiveness, and efficiency of actors in the tourism sector as the country prepares for the reopening of the 2020-2021 tourist season. The beneficiaries include taxi drivers, tourist taxi drivers, fruit sellers, juice pressers, hairdressers, Senegambia market vendors, Koto market vendors, Cape Point market craft vendors, craft market vendors around the other sectors or areas where tourists actually go to, tourist guides and bird watchers, miscellaneous businesses, hotels, guest houses and motels, off-country lodges and camps, ground operators, equipment hires and car rental companies, tourist boats, vessels and pirogues, bars, restaurants and clubs, beach bars, travel agencies, casinos and gaming houses, the Gambia Tourism and Hospitality Institute, the Institute of Travel and Tourism of the Gambia, the Fashion Designers Association, the Book Publishers Association, the Theatre Association, Artist Groups, Film Producers Association, the National Centre for Arts and Culture, and the Music Union Association. So these are actually going to be the beneficiaries of uh, this uh, $100 million support from the government of the Gambia to help the actors in the tourism subsector as the country prepares for the 2020-2021 tourist season. The Gambia has a small, undiversified economy, heavy reliant on tourism, trade, remittance and substance agriculture. Due to the coronavirus pandemic, there is literally a total shutdown in the tourism industry, which has significant negative socio-economic impact on all sectors in the industry. Street business is surviving in the Gambia even though the Gambia is at a low return rate with 12,000 Gambians to travel to Italy. The Gambia's youth unemployment rate is still at 12.47%. The coronavirus pandemic triggered job losses and income drop. About 70% of the population lives on less than $5 a day. Let's take a look. There are different types of businesses. Street business has become a major deal in the Gambia, in all parts of the country, alongside the road, inside the neighborhood, selling all kinds of different goods and services. People believe that street business is more cheap, while street hawkers believe that it's the fastest and easiest way to earn income. Yeah. My name is... You don't accept me? Hundred. 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 Man, but to any size, lah, <laughs> buga. Anko pulo, anko minko sire, de miwari nene. During the 22 years of Jamis Iron Rule, several Gambians have sick for asylum, even if the majority were fleeing poverty rather than persecution. But with the autocratic precedents exists in January, Gambians ground for international protection have suddenly become shakier, making them prime EU target for rapid return. Gambians are one of the top nationalities among the 93,000 mainly African and Asian migrants who have arrived in 2020. 
Okay. <laughs> Street business seems to empower people in deep poverty in transforming their lives through their small scale businesses. Even though the Gambia is at low return rate with 12,000 Gambians to travel to Italy, only 15 were forcefully returned. Gambia's new government has received unprecedented amount of development aid from the EU to tackle its backway exodus with youth training and job creation programs. With the fast movement of these cars around, are the safety of these people guaranteed? Gambia at the time was fast approaching to be the epicenter per capita of the coronavirus pandemic. During this time, the government levied restrictions on market operations, which led the market un union's decision to go on a sit-down strike. On September 21st, when the Gambia's vice president, Aisa Dature, gave a relief statement promising the market union that the issue will be sent to parliament to make amendments concerning market operations during the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, rejoice in the local markets as government declared all markets and lumos open throughout the jurisdiction of the Gambia. After the first COVID-19 case, the Gambian government on Wednesday, 18 March 2020, made a televised statement ordering the closure of all weekly markets throughout the country. This decision by the government have drastically affected the exchange of goods and services in the local markets. The atmosphere of rejoicing has thrilled in the local markets after the government announced that it is going to open all markets and lumos throughout the jurisdiction of the country, effective 5th October 2020.
kutajon janku janku on moi suba so teje so so be suba nga ne ka be wan nga tej go bo bu do ko be 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 ele ga se ele ga lol mo ta on bo mo indi on jafe jafe time bi ni de ga ubu suba nga nga jaay be ngon lo am rek ga hamne bo bo in the Serekuna market, vendors did not hesitate to show their delight over the president's statement to reopen all markets throughout the country. After the first documented COVID-19 case in the Gambia in March, the president of the Gambia, Adam Obaru, declared a state of public emergency and many other social restrictions, including the closure of schools throughout the country, as ways to mitigate the spread of coronavirus pandemic in the Gambia as a whole. Now the government decided to reopen schools. Let's have a look. On Tuesday, 6 October 2020, the Minister of Basic and Secondary Education, Madam Claudiano Cole, has announced the reopening of school effective 14 October 2020. school tomorrow. You go to bed earlier. Schools will reopen for grades 7 to 12 on October 14, 2020, and for ECD to grade 6 on October 20th, 2020. After the first coronavirus case in the Gambia in March, the President, His Excellency Adam Abaro, have declared a state of public emergency and many other social restrictions, including the closure of schools throughout the country, as ways to mitigate the further spread of the coronavirus pandemic. For me, the reopening of school show me is very, very important because it will help us. Like the physical contact that students would have with their lecturer is very, very important. Yes, more so the young ones, like those in the primary and then the junior and then the secondary, are finding it difficult to understand the lessons that are being taught through the online. Speaking to us was Mr. Diba, acting principal of Daddy Job Senior Secondary School. It's a good idea. And uh, we welcome the we welcome the idea also because no life has to continue. Who highlighted on the importance of government's decision to reopen all schools. The reopening of schools, however, comes with restricted measures to avoid the spread of coronavirus. These measures include the compulsory wearing of face masks, avoiding direct contacts of teachers and students, and reducing the size of the classes. In other countries, schools, you know, kids are going to school. And uh, if you look at some countries where these things was there, people are going to school. So our schools were closed in March. Since that time, it's almost about six months now, kids are sitting at home. But thank God that our examination classes, that's the grade 9 and the grade 12, were able to complete their circle of education, sit into their exams, and... Uh, Completed. Now it's the main with the other levels because we have almost about 700,000 students sitting at, at home waiting for the school to be reopened. So it came at a time we really welcome it. It's very good. And uh, parents, 
teaching fraternity. Everybody, students, we all welcome the idea. Samara Kuli, a uniform seller, shows delight over government's decision to open schools. I would like to appreciate the responsible and positive behavior the teachers and students have displayed during this difficult period as it gave us the courage to explore learning moves via the television. Because they are not used to it. So I'm to concentrate on Amusiwa. Radio and other social media platforms. The online classes, too, in order way, could be effective. As alternatives to the conventional practices. If the students are following it. Because if you look at the TV, I mean, the teachers who are doing this are experienced teachers. And uh, if the kids follow, they can learn, they will learn a lot. Yeah, but if you look at it in other way around, how many of them are following this? Those who are not following it are more than those who are following these things on TV. the review of all these stories now keep following block tv gambia where we bring you trending issues that are happening around you for block tv i am amina sawane <laughs>